it did, Boomer. Try to think of one now. Well, we could go into business and be partners. Yeah, we could. But what kind of business? Well, we could... We could make other kids pay a nickel to watch Lassie do some of her tricks. No. Lassie's no show-off. to show off. What's she doing now? Lassie. Lassie, what are you doing? <laughs> Must be fleas. Lassie never gets fleas. Then it's ticks. Mike's full of them this time of year. <laughs> Lassie's never acted like this before. It must be something worse. Let's find out. I'll start up here, and you start down there. And we'll meet in the middle. Not so fast. You'll miss it. something. I knew Lassie wasn't showing off. She was in trouble. It's a ladybug. Ladybugs are lucky bugs. Maybe we're gonna be lucky. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. The house is on fire and your children are gone. All except one. Can't wish out loud if we want our wish to come true. And we gotta make a wish before it flies away if we want to be lucky. Wonder why it doesn't fly away. Hey, maybe it's dead. No, it's not dead. It's moving. There's a bunch here. I bet Lassie will be glad I'm getting them off. Three, four, five, six. Gee, there's about 12 here. Eight, nine, ten. What are you doing that for? Soon nobody will step on them. We're both wishing the same thing. Well, if you're wishing we're gonna be partners, uh-oh. I just can't get it. Need any help, Ruth? No, thanks. I'll be through in a jiffy. Good. Well, it sure looks like somebody needs some help. I'm all mixed up. I knew the adding ones, but I can't get this takeaway one. Will you help me, Uncle Petrie? Well, now, uh... If you was to ask me how to trap a wild bear, I could tell you, but, uh... Maybe you better ask your ma. She's the one that does the figuring around here. All right. Which is the one that's giving you trouble? Well, now, let me see. 
I just might learn something myself. <laughs> uh, uh... Say anything in there about how to get rid of those aphid pests on our apple trees? The usual suggestions. John Garrett says we're in for a real siege. Worst this county's seen in 50 years. And what's he doing about it? And he won't say. When it comes to giving out useful information, <laughs> John's close as a clam. Well, I know what I'm going to do to save our apple trees. There now. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> I know how to do it now. Gee, you're smart, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you. Being a scientific farmer, I reckon you'll hire one of those newfangled crop dusting contraptions, huh? Uh, you reckon wrong. They're too expensive. I'm using ladybugs. Well, I'll be gall darn. You know something? Ladybugs is what I would have used. <laughs> Gee, Dad, how can ladybugs save your apple trees? By eating up the aphids that are eating up the apple trees. Ladybugs live on aphids. They'd rather eat aphids than, uh, than ice cream and cake. They would? Save your crops nature's way. Use ladybug pest control on aphids. Write today for your order, $10 a gallon prepaid Bill Newton, Constant, California. You mean people sell ladybugs? They certainly do. Make a mighty good living at it, too. Ten dollars a gallon for a bunch of little old ladybugs? Hear that, Lassie? Well, considering how many ladybugs there are to a gallon. How many? Let me see. Uh, 7,500 to a quart. Shouldn't Timmy figure that out, counting it as part of his homework? We haven't come to quarts and gallons yet. Well, uh, since you're the mathematician of the family, Ruth, how many? Well, um, well there are four quarts in a gallon, and uh, four times 7,500 is uh, uh, 30,000. And that should be more than enough to protect our apple orchard. 30,000? How many ladybugs would it take to save one apple tree, Dad? Well, if they're all lady ladybugs, which are larger than gentleman ladybugs, and they all lay eggs, and the eggs all hatch, about a dozen, I'd say. Yes, with all those babies, 12 would do it. Well, don't count your ladybugs before they're hatched. It's Timmy's bedtime. Come on, off to bed with you now. Good night. You too, Lassie. Night, Dad. Night, Uncle Petrie. Good night, boy. Good night, dear. Good night, son. Night, everybody. Thirty thousand ladybugs in a gallon. Gee whiz. Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and all the ladybugs, and keep them safe so they can save Dad's apple trees. Amen. Suppose they'd wake up like all the other animals? What's the matter, Lassie? They can't hurt you as long as they're on the bench. Look 
awful big to me. Can you tell if they're lady, ladybugs? Dad says they're the biggest. Take a look, Lassie. What's she doing up so early? What's he doing up so early? Ladybugs? Where'd you find them? Well, I didn't exactly. Lassie sort of picked them up. That boomer and I could find more in the woods. And if we found a gallon of them, you could pay us ten dollars instead of sending it to those folks in California. We want to go into the business. Breakfast is ready, and school won't keep. What's the mysterious confab about? Timmy wants to go into the ladybug business. Oh, well, that's quite an undertaking. You betcha. You got to know when and where and how. That is, unless you can find them while they're still hibernating. Hiber... What's hibernating? Hibernating. Well, hibernating means sleeping through the winter, like bears do. Only difference is ladybugs sleep together. Thousands of them in one spot. That's what these ladybugs are doing. That's why they were so quiet and didn't fly away, isn't it? Well, I understand it takes several weeks of warm weather to thaw them out and make them active enough to fly again. Isn't that so, Paul? Boomer and I better get started right after school. Well, it wouldn't harm none to let him try, Paul. It's been a cool spring, and there's bound to be thousands of ladybugs still hibernating under rocks and leaves and hollow tree stumps hereabouts. Well, who'll uh, clean them off the leaves? Takes a lot of patience, Timmy. Well, I'm willing to volunteer. Please, please let us, Dad. You never give up, do you? All right, since you're so determined. Good. Well, now that's settled. Would you three gentlemen please do me the honor of joining me at breakfast? And even businessmen don't go to school in their bathrobes. I'll get just real fast, Mom. I've got to set a deadline, though. You've got to deliver the goods by Monday. Otherwise, I've got to send my order to those folks in California. No, you won't, Dad. <laughs> I wish it was afternoon already, so Boomer and I could start our business. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Timmy. Bye, boy. Bye. Well, work to be done. More coffee? Mm -hmm. You don't really expect him to come back with 30,000 ladybugs now, do you? Confidentially, whether they find the ladybugs or not doesn't matter. What's gratifying is Timmy's reason for wanting to do it. That's what puzzles me. Why is he so anxious? Because he's beginning to grow up. He wants to go into business for himself. What do you think of your independent son? Well, I'm very proud of him. <laughs> Ouch! That hurts! Why does it have to be so tight? Well, so they won't tickle you to pieces when you start scooping them into these bags. How will we know when we have a gallon? Oh, no need to worry about that. If you find them, just keep on scooping and your fortune's made. We almost forgot to tie up Lassie. Oh, dogs don't like to be bound up, do they, Lassie? <laughs> well, there you are. Good luck and good hunting. It's up to you, Lassie, to help us start our business. <laughs> <laughs> be around here, because Uncle Petrie said they sleep under rocks and stumps. And there are no rocks or stumps around here.
found him, girl. <laughs> you know where we are, Boomer? Right in the middle of Dad's North Field. We just came from here. Thought you said Lassie's the best tracking dog in the world. She is. Then why is she tracking in circles? I don't know. Looks like she doesn't want to find the ladybugs for us. Well, if Lassie doesn't want to find those ladybugs, she must have a good reason. But I still think she's the smartest dog in the world. You're right, she is. Lassie went in that direction, didn't she? Well, then, since people should be smarter than dogs, and we're people, why shouldn't we go back where we started? You mean, since Lassie's so smart, she was leading us away from the ladybugs? Sure she was. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> So, didn't I? tree stump where they got the ladybugs was on my side of the property line. No, no, no. No sense getting all riled up, Navy Garrett. Nor telling me did the fence zig or did it zag or who should have mended it. Being strictly a backwoodsman, I never did get the straight of thine or mine or who's right away. So I'm just going to keep on cleaning these pretty little bugs for who's ever orchard. So Paul tells me where to put them. I'm telling you. Those bugs belong in my orchard. You thought you could get away with it just because that stump where I put them stands in property that we're disputing. Now, look here, John. What's this all about? Now, let's start from the beginning. Well, whether you did or whether you didn't, it's the same difference. Would I have spent all that money shipping ladybugs from California just so I could start next year's breeding badge for you? No, I don't think you would. You thought she'd get away with it. Just because that stump where I put them stands on property, we're disputing. Gosh, Lassie, I didn't know that was Mr. Garrett's field. I can't let Dad take the blame for something I did, can I? If Dad gives back those ladybugs, Dad's apple trees won't be saved. You really want to help, don't you? Even if I didn't know they belonged to Mr. Garrett, we still have to replace those ladybugs, don't we, Lassie? You're not going to back out on me again, are you? This is your last chance. Are you coming with me, or do I have to go alone? Okay, if that's the way you want it.
threatening you like that, going off in a huff. Stubborn, ornery old fool. Yeah, but the joke's on him. John doesn't know that ladybugs like to try out their wings first before settling down to eat. So if he'd put them in his apple trees tomorrow, as he said he was going to do, most of them would have flown away. Maybe to our orchard, maybe elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. So Timmy did him a favor by bringing the ladybugs over here. Only John didn't give me a chance to tell him. I better check the irrigation. Where's Timmy? I don't know. The lassie came through here a few minutes ago. Uh, probably on some secret service mission Timmy's got cooked up. Let me down. Now everybody's apple trees are saved. And so, when I took all those ladybugs to John Garrett, and he saw he had more than he'd bought in the beginning. <laughs> What'd he say? He said next year he's gonna buy all his ladybugs from Timmy. <laughs> We're not in the ladybug business anymore. Guardrail, Boomer. Little pigs can get under in case any of them is in the way when the maw lies down. My pot never built anything like that. Oh? Had some pigs rolled on then, I'll bet you. What'd you put on the fence? Oh, we washed it down with lye solution and sprayed it with disinfectant. Thanks for the hot water. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Lassie. Come on, Mike. 
Atta boy. Come on, gal. Come on. Come on, gal. your ears and make her happy, son. You're gonna give that hog a bath? Well, she's a very fine animal, Boomer. She's gonna have a fine litter. It'll be a small litter, maybe just four pigs, six at the most, but we want them all to live, so we're gonna do our best to protect them before they're born. My pop gets eight and ten pigs out of his sows. Well, they're brood sows. Our gal's just a year old. This is her first time. But she'll have big litters when she's older. Dad, Boomer says our gal's wacky. What makes you think so? That's what Pop said last night at supper. Said he wouldn't have her, she'd won six blue ribbons, instead of just two. Well, Irv Simmons warned you she was a mite temperamental. What is temper? What does Mr. Simmons mean, Dad? Oh. Just she might be hard to handle. I don't see any sign of it. Look at her. What does that mean, Lassie? She's okay or uh, look out for mischief? You know, I'd give plenty to be able to understand everything Lassie says. <laughs> All I want right now is to get some inside information from this one. Maybe the boys will help you spread a little straw for her nest, Uncle Petrie. Okay, come on, boys. And there's a loose board on the fence. Uh-oh, forgot that. That's where I run out of nails. What do you suppose made Boomer's father say that about our gal? I don't know, but I do know she's one of the best young sows I ever saw in my life. And if there'd been anything wrong with her, Irv Simmons wouldn't have sold her to me. Especially at the price you paid for her. Do you miss your new refrigerator that much? There, there just wasn't enough money for our gal and it, too. Oh, no, I'm not worried about the refrigerator. I can wait for it. I just don't want you to be disappointed. Honey, out of the profits that our gal brings us, I'll buy you a new freezer, too. She's going to be the grandma, the great-grandma, and the great-great-grandma of the purebred herd I always dreamed about. Oh, dreamer. <laughs> What's happening? Lassie! Lassie, come back! Uncle Petrie, she can't be chased in her condition. Condition? Huh. If I was going to rob a bank, I'd get her to buck my way in for me. You know? She found the only board in the whole doggone fence that I didn't nail. Paul, if she's a runaway, we can have an awful time with her. You fret too much. We'll get her back. Come on, Lassie. I'd better fix that board. Easy, Lassie. Easy. Don't make her run. All right, Lassie, see if you can get around behind her and herd her toward us. Daddy, here, gal. Here's some nice corn for you. Mm -hmm. 
Keep my quiet, Boomer. Okay, I guess. Maybe I better take Mike home. Dad, he won't let him do it again. Okay, but hang on to him, huh, Boomer? I see you, Mr. Martin. I'll try to head her off. Come on, Lassie. We'll go a different way. Yeah, until she gets away from you. That's a good idea. Come on, Lassie. Simmons has her. Hi, Irv. That's all. How'd you get her in there? Well, it's easy when you know how. You sorghum mash. Of course, any kind of mash will do if you pour a cup of sorghum over it. She's crazy about the stuff. I guess I should have told you about it, eh? That isn't all you should have told me. What do you mean, Paul? She just led us a two-mile chase through the woods. Well, that figures. That's normal for her? Well, uh, pigs are plenty smart, and this one's just about the smartest pig I ever raised. Trouble is, like I told you, <laughs> she's just full of the old Ned. Now, you said she was temperamental. Same thing, isn't it? Dad says that means hard to handle. He's so right, Sonny. You know, I was fixing some leaks in the roof of my barn, and I left my ladder standing up. And you know what she did? She climbed right up that ladder, and she was standing on the cleats that I was using on the job when I missed her and went looking. You mean a pig can climb a ladder? You know, some people wouldn't believe what a pig could do. Yes, sir, that wacky sow darn near gave me heart trouble more than once. <laughs> See, Timmy, even he says she's wacky. Well, now, uh, maybe I used the wrong word. She's uh, just so smart she gets into mischief. I get into mischief sometimes, too. <laughs> I'll bet a bright red button you do. Well, Paul, you still want to keep her? Yes, I guess I do. Well, I hope that she delivers you a whole parcel of blue ribbon winners. You keep your fingers crossed until she uh, births that litter. Paul. <laughs> OK, fellas, come on. We'll go for a ride. <laughs> She got hungry chasing our gal. What's the matter, Dad? Eat up. No, I'm a bit preoccupied, I guess. Now who's fretting too much? I just can't get over our gal climbing that ladder. Well, you better. I understand she can even fly. Oh, Paul, she's perfectly safe in her pen. You gave her some sorghum mash. She's the cleanest pig in the world since her second bath. And, well, she ought to be just purring like a cat. One thing, sure, she can't get out. You know, I'm going to patent that wood bar I put on the door to her run. I'm still going to go out and take a last look at our gal. Excuse me. I'm going, too. Yes, and you wait. Now, mind your manners. Yes, and excuse me. Come on, Lassie. She's kind of pretty, isn't she, Dad? Mm-hmm. Dad, do people ever put pigs in races? Not that I ever heard of. It's a pity, too. We could do some winning with our gal, but we're going to win with her in our own way, because in just about two years, with any kind of luck, we'll have more than 60 pigs just like her. 60? And we'll keep about that many here all the time. When I first saw this farm, I figured it would support that size herd in addition to our other stock. How could you tell, Dad? Oh, it's a matter of feeding. The corn we can raise, the pasturage we've got. It's hard work, but we can do it. <laughs> in a couple of years, you'll be able to handle a litter like that all by yourself. How would you like that? Swell, but... What's the matter? When's our gal gonna have this litter? <laughs> That's a pretty good question, Timmy. Let's see if she can give us a hint, though. You notice how she's lying there all relaxed? 
When Sal's about to farrow, she's restless, walks around. Instinct causes her to make a nest for a litter. Our gal hasn't. So I'd say right now it's pretty hard to tell. Then we don't have to worry. No, and we're not going to. You just wait and see. Everything will be fine. What's up, Paul? Have you seen our gal? Nope. Do well, you mean she run away again? Yep. Jimmy, the special wood bar I had fixed up, and I was gonna take out a patent on it. <laughs> Bars ain't no good for that pig. I bet you could train her to pick a lot. Irv, <laughs> when we do find her, can I trade her back to you for a plain, untemperamental sow? But, Dad, we like our gal. And so does Lassie. <laughs> well, we like her too, Sonny. But she sure is a handful. She's an awful smart pig. She'll change. Look, Lassie's found our gal. She's all right, Dad. We don't have to trade her back now, do we? No, Timmy. Do you see what I see? Yep. She's farrowed. I'll still give you another sow, Paul. I wouldn't hear of it. I bought a brood sow. She's dropped her litter somewhere, and we've got to find them. But where did you leave her babies, Dad? I don't know, son. But unless they're fed within six hours after they're born, they're not going to live. Well, let's get busy. Lassie, we're going back on our gal's trail. Come on. We're going to find the babies. Come on, Uncle Petrie. I'll have our gal all cleaned up and ready to nurse by the time you get back. Timmy will take it pretty hard if we don't find those pigs alive. Means something to you, too, don't it, Paul? Plenty. If only we could know what goes on in that sow's mind, we might be able to figure out where our gal went. Keep on trying, boy. I know I can't think like a pig. here. Rooting for acorn sprouts. That's what she was doing. I hear her tracks as she headed out. Yeah. Get on the trail, Lassie. No, this way, Lassie. Let her go, Timmy. She's got notions of her own. Look there, a fox. He's after the baby pigs. Ah, uh, don't you worry. Lassie will take care of him. She's headed him off. Shh, shh. Let's listen for Lassie. Maybe she's hurt, Dad. No, she's picked up our gal's trail. of them. 
and all healthy. Yeah, and they sure are hungry. Let me see, let me see. Gee, they're tiny. Bet you they weigh all of three pounds apiece. Can't we just take them home, Dad? Their home is where our gal is. We've got to get them to her in an awful hurry. You're not just a talking, Paul. Let's go. You ready, Paul? Watch her now. There's no telling what she might do. Let's have her. Come on, you cantankerous female. Come on. Get it out. Yeah, take over now, Gallier. Hey, hey, come back here. Peter, go herd her back and we'll try it again. Hey, 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 hey. No, I don't think I'd take a chance if I was you, Paul. Hey, you're right. She's pretty skittish. The litter's too valuable to let her hurt them. Do you have a brood, Sal, that might adopt a litter? Yeah, all my litters are too large. Besides, it takes time to get us out, except your pigs, and they gotta be fed right now. Okay. Let's bottle feed them. <laughs> Already thought of that. I asked the missus to warm up a cow milk formula just in case. It's up at the house. Get him. Get him. Get him. All right, Pigby, let's go up and get the formula. Come along. They'll do all right on bottles, won't they, Dad? We'll just have to wait and see, son. Doing Dad and Uncle Petru, mine don't like it much. Ah, uh, they miss them all. And this ain't exactly the kind of a bank, but more nature told them to expect. They'll live, won't they? I've got just about enough down them to ward off starvation, but that's about all. I'd like to wring that our gal's neck. She'll do better. Lassie'll show her what to do. We can depend on Lassie, Dad. Yep, Lassie, you're responsible. You know what the Chinese believe when you save anybody's life? You gotta take care of them forever after. Well, you got six lives you saved, so do your stuff. A silly sow climbed clear over the fence. Where does she think she's going? Well, look, she's heading for your place. Last you'll take her home, I bet. Now, it's no use abusing your hospitality any longer. If you lend us a basket, we'll take the litter back with us and round up our gal and try again. Why, sure, Paul. Come on, Timmy. Our gal. Why did we ever call her that? news I've had today. Look at her family. I'm willing to try anything. Go ahead. See, Gal? This is what you're supposed to do. 
Feed him. Mm. Let him nurse. Well, can I see you a minute? Uh, you and Lassie stay here and watch our gal for a minute, will you, son? Well, she's liable to kick up a fuss when we tie her down and force her to feed him. Oh, Paul. It won't hurt her. We just want you to keep Timmy out of the way. Lassie, we gotta do something. Talk to our gal. Gal, can't you stop being silly? You're an awful smart pig. Don't you know those babies are yours? Pay attention. She's talking to our gal. <laughs> She's asking me to open the gate. <laughs> Lassie? Maybe I don't understand everything Lassie says, but that pig sure does. How do you suppose Lassie talked her into it, Dad? It's beyond me, son. But I'm beginning to understand a little more now. See, our gal wasn't at home on this farm yet. Animals feel things, too, and... Like people, when they're moved, they, they leave something of themselves at the old home. There's an emptiness in them until they can sink their roots into the new place. Our gal ran home to Irv's farm, and she couldn't get there before she had her babies, and then when she did have them in the woods, she couldn't figure out where she belonged. And I bet Lassie told her this was home. It could be. And I bet Lassie told her that she is a grown-up mother pig now. And she better act like one. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And I'd like to offer my thanks, Lassie. I'd like to offer my thanks too, Lassie. wonderful thrill when I looked at the Statue of Freedom on top of the Capitol Dome. And I know you would, too. Being an American means being free. And our freedom is worth any price we're called upon to pay for it. This Peace Patrol is one way every young American can help to defend our freedom and build our power for peace. Every young American will be proud to carry one of our Peace Patrol cards. I ask all of you who believe with me that each of us has the power to help make this a better world. Who believe that we should be prepared physically, mentally, and morally to stand up for right. Who believe that more knowledge and understanding will help keep peace in the world. Boys and girls, I ask you to join our Peace Patrol at school. Teachers, and parents, and postmasters, we need you too. Get behind the United States Saving Stamps program. The Peace Patrol is for everyone the strength and glory of the land we love.
Timmy, will you open the blinds, please? Well, students, we've all seen the importance of the Peace Patrol to the security and strength of our country. As the representative of the school association in this county, I'm very happy that all of the schools are participating in the Peace Patrol membership drive. And each of you students should be proud that you've been chosen to be captains of your school. We sure are. Now, uh, these are your sales kits. There's a poster to help in recruiting members. Your saving stamps, 25 cents to a dollar. Your Peace Patrol membership card. An album to paste your stamps in. And uh, each school will need a money box, which I advise be placed in your teacher's care. Uh, Timmy Martin, would you pass these to the other captains, please? Yes, sir. Now, the school which gets the largest number of members will receive a handsome plaque in honor of its patriotic effort. But, hear this. The school which gets the highest quota within two weeks will receive its plaque from the Lone Ranger in person. Yippee! Are there any questions? Mr. Rayburn, sir? Timmy. Do you have to fill the whole album to join? No, Timmy. A student can become a peace patroller by buying only a 25-cent savings stamp. Thank you. And when your album is filled with stamps totaling $18.75, bring it to the bank and turn it in for a $25 savings bond. Any other questions? Well then, captains, get to work. I pledge myself to learn. I pledge myself to learn. Because knowledge and understanding. Because knowledge and understanding. Will help keep peace in the world. Will help keep peace in the world. To save because United States saving bonds and stamps. To save because United States saving bonds and stamps. Will help keep our country strong. Will help keep our country strong. Gosh, only one 25 cent stamp and I'm a peace patroller. Was I first in our school? Uh-huh, excepting for me. That's because you're captain. Long as I'm second, I guess that makes me lieutenant. I could sure use somebody to help me. Of course you could. But Mr. Rayburn didn't say anything about lieutenants. Every captain has a lieutenant. Mom, what do you say? Well, I don't know. Who's head of the Peace Patrol drive? The Long Ranger. Well, the Long Ranger has a lieutenant, doesn't he? Tonto, he's got Tonto. And you've got me. We'll both get the Long Ranger to come here. And so we're too. Yippee! Come on, Lassie. Hi, aren't you coming into the parlor? Yes, as soon as I fix Timmy's lunch. Didn't you have enough supper? Mm, that was a pretty good meatloaf. That's what I say. I think I'll go out and take a quick look at that cap. You could uh, pay for your snacks by picking out a nice ripe apple for Timmy. I'll get it. Father, like uncle, like son. Ah, thank you. Penny for your thoughts. Has anyone ever collected that penny? I will. One more penny and I'll have 25 cents for another savings stamp. Oh? I was really thinking about the savings bond. I'll never get my stamp album filled. Oh, I don't know. You're getting another 25 cent stamp to go with the one you have. Yeah, but that's only 50 cents. <laughs> well, you'll be surprised how fast your pennies and nickels and dimes will grow once you set your mind to saving them. should set an example for the others, being captain of the Peace Patrol Drive. That's the trouble with being captain or committee chairman of anything. They either do all the work or pay all the money. <laughs> you know, if I had a job, 
I could get lots of nickels and dimes. Well, you must have quite a few tucked away in that little bank of yours. Yeah, but I'm not supposed to touch them. It's just gathering dust sitting there. Oh, no, it isn't. Just can't get in my bank. <laughs> <laughs> what your Uncle Petrie means is that saving stamps grow into bonds, and bonds gather interest. You get enough bonds together, and they'll earn more money for you than a job can. Gosh, I've saved up 75 cents. Can I have it all? You certainly may. Fifty, seventy-five. I just wanted to see if I could shake some more out. I guess that's all there is. Like he promised? Uh-huh. Right after school. That makes all the kids in school members. Except Frankie Jessup. Yeah, a new kid. And you can have him. Why? He's on your list. Yeah. Well, the third time I asked him to join, he said he'd beat up on anyone who even looked like they were going to ask him again. He did? And he meant it, too. Gosh, how do you figure a kid like that? <laughs> I'm not going to ask Frankie to join. But well, we've got to do something. It's Friday already. Well, I don't want to get beat up. But Monday's our last day. If we're going to get the Lone Ranger and Silver to come. Yeah. So let's go back. It's Frankie's turn to stay after school. <laughs> What's the matter, Sonny? You get caught talking in class? No, we take turns cleaning up. Don't they have a janitor here? No. Well, uh, who's in charge? Maybe they'll hire one. Miss Hazlitt, I guess. Where'll I find her? I don't know, maybe in Calverton. Thanks, Sonny. About beating you up? About beating up whoever asked him to join. Well, that's you. Oh, and he meant it, too. What are you doing here? He wants to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to him or you. Why won't you join the Peace Patrol? Didn't Boomer tell you that the Long Ranger and Silver would come in person? If our school got the most members by Monday? I told them all right. Why don't you want them to come? You put that down. It's the money box. It's got all our Peace Patrol money in it. Yeah, from every kid in school, but you. I said I'd beat up the next kid who tried to make me join. Nobody can make you join. But why won't you? It's none of your business, see? Let's go, Boomer. I 
been. Today was the Grange ladies' luncheon. Oh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell the whole school about that old Frankie Jessup. And when I get done, nobody will even talk to him. But that way, he'll never join the Peace Patrol. What do you think, Mom? Well, since this is the Lone Ranger's project, why don't you try and do what he'd do? Try and find out what makes Frankie act that way. But he won't tell us. Well, in that case, he'd probably scout around with Tonto and learn what he could. Yeah. But what would he do when he found out? Well, then I think he'd probably try to help Frankie instead of fight him. Come on, Tonto. Let's go scouting. Yeah. Mom, I bet you were the prettiest lady at the party. Well, thank you. You're welcome. There was a market for weeds. We're not making a go of it, are we, Dad? I wish I could say we were. You always said a man any farmer until he owns a piece of land of his own. Just buying this place took all my cash. I had no idea what it took to start a farm. Can I quit school, Dad? Schooling's what gives a man a chance to get ahead. I know, but that way I could get a job and maybe bring in some money. Oh, schooling comes first, son. Well, we haven't lost our farm yet. Not yet. But we're gonna, aren't we, Dad? Oh, hey, Paul. Time's a-wasting. Don't be in such a hurry. Just because you won last night. Well, who won two nights in a row last week? Well, sure. But who won the other five? Mom, can I tell you how we peace patrol this afternoon? Oh, yes. Well, Tonto, Lassie, and I hid out over by Frankie Jessup's place. Oh, yes. And we found out what's wrong with Frankie. His father is going to lose the farm. But they just moved in. I know, Mom. We heard Mr. Jessup tell Frankie that it took all his money to buy the farm. And now they can't make it go. But I still don't know why Frankie doesn't like me. Well, I think it may have something to do with the Peace Patrol. I don't understand, Mom. Well, Timmy, if the Jessops need money that badly, maybe even a 25-cent savings stamp is too much to buy. Why didn't he tell me? Well, that's something that sometimes even adults are too proud to admit. Can you understand that, Timmy? I think so, Mom. They're my hens. Reckon I can give them to the Jessops if I want to. I'm not arguing with you. I should have known. What are you taking? Well, I've always had a hunch that uh, soybeans would grow on that land. I'm backing my hunch with some seeds. You nearly ready, Ruth? I'm afraid you'll have to help me with this basket. <laughs> there you are. Nothing like a few good meals to help build a person's morale. I'll get the Grange helpers to lend a hand right away. Oh, good. Oh, I'll get it. Hazlitt. Yes, he's here. <laughs> All right, just a minute. Timmy! Telephone. Miss Hazlitt. Am I supposed to be in school today? Oh, I don't think so. It's Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Miss Hazlitt? No. It's gone? Gosh, that's awful. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Somebody stole the money box. Miss Hazlitt's going to tell the sheriff. Wow, who did it? Nobody knows. Miss Hazlitt forgot to take it home. 
And then when she came back to get it, it was gone. I'll bet Frankie stole it. I don't know. You heard him tell his daddy he was going to bring some money home. Yeah, but we didn't see him take it. You're the captain. You better go looking for clues. Yeah, I guess that's right. Mom, yeah. we've got to go to school today. Today? It's about the Peace Patrol. Yeah, the captain has to tend to things. Oh. Okay, we'll see you later. <laughs> Come on, Lassie. <laughs> Jessup? Uh, if you're looking for Frank, he ain't here. We, uh, we came to see you, Mr. Jessup. Oh, whatever it is, I can't buy it or join up. We, uh, we heard about your problem. We'd like to help, if we may. Well, the whole world's tumbling down. You think you can stop it? We'd like to try, Mr. Jessup. I've run out of money. I'm losing my farm, and now the sheriff's out looking for my son. The sheriff's looking for Frankie? Well, he was unhappy in school, count of the farm being so poor. But he didn't steal that money box. Oh, that must be why the teacher telephoned Timmy. Where's Frankie now? Well, he ran off when the sheriff came to question him. But he didn't do it. Now, Frankie's a good boy, you hear? Mr. Jessup, would you like to drive around with us now and see if we can find him? Oh, I'd sure welcome a chance. Come on, hop in back with me. It must be the thief's trail. But Frankie lives off the other way. Whoever it is, Lassie won't stop till she gets him. Would you lead a trail to your own house? She's warning us not to get too close. Trying to be careful. I don't blame her. Come on, Pooch. Come on, bring it over here. Thank you. 
It's a thief. Because we trailed him. Clean from school. Is it Frankie? We don't know. Well, we'll sure find out. I told you it wasn't Frankie. Everything's going to be all right now, son. I'm glad. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to all of you. And a special thank you to the members of the Lone Ranger Peace Patrol. You know, boys and girls, it's youngsters like you that make up the backbone of America. Growing up fine and free. And it's the saving stamps and bonds that you buy that help keep our country strong. I've presented plaques to many schools throughout our land. But I take special pride in presenting the plaque for this school to a lad who did his job in the best Lone Ranger Peace Patrol tradition. <laughs> Jimmy, I congratulate you and your school for doing a Fine job. Come on, son. Boomer Bates. Congratulations to you, too, son. Tano couldn't have done a better job than you did. Until today, Silver was the only animal in the Peace Patrol. Now, we proudly welcome another. Ladies and gentlemen, a hand for Lassie. Good girl, Lassie. 